Hi, Dr. Melody here with Fit Plus Faith. Super happy to be here with you this morning. This is Friday morning, and this is our live weekday morning devotion that we do in uh, on the Fit Plus Faith Facebook page. And we are going through a book called Faith, Fitness, and Food. So let me make sure I get everything going here. Hey, Jordan, good morning. Great to see you here this morning. I know that uh, you've been traveling with your family and seeing your new nephew and everything, so that's super awesome. So great to have you with us. And uh, yeah, it's been wonderful. Hey, Laura, good morning as well. So I love seeing you ladies here ready to go on this Friday morning. And so for those of you that are just joining us for the first time maybe or catching a replay, we do these live weekday morning devotions, weekday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, let me make sure that the video is getting started here, uh, taking a little bit of a delay. So just one second. All right, hopefully that's gonna be coming up soon because I am here with you. I'm just wondering where the video is. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Hey Jordan, oh, says so glad to be back. Said, miss you ladies. Hey ladies, let me know if you can see the video right now because on my phone, the video itself is not coming up, but I can see you and I can see your comments. So let me know if you see the video. Otherwise, are you just hearing my audio right now? So I don't know what's going on. Let me pull up on my computer real quick and see if we can figure that out as well. But yeah, I'm glad that you're back, Jordan. We've missed you for sure. We've had wonderful discussions and I know you've done your best to be listening along. Okay, Jordan says I can. So hopefully that means you can see the video. Is that what that means? Let me see here. Okay, okay. yeah. The video is working on my, uh, hey Laura, good morning. Second Laura, we've got two Lauras with us this morning. Okay, then we're good to go. The video is working on my computer, just not on my phone. So as long as I can see your comments, that's the only main thing that I wanna be able to see. Hey Sue, good morning, great to see you here. Hey Barbie, good morning. Okay, great ladies, thank you, thank you. How odd, right, that it's not showing up on my phone. But as long as I can see your comments and it's working on my computer, then there we go. Okay, good. All right, ladies, so like I said, today is day 23. It is called, It Takes Discipline. It does take discipline, right? Anything that we want to achieve, no matter whether it's health related or not, but kind of especially if it's health related, it takes discipline. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about this morning. So I hope you're ready for a message that's just gonna be straight to the heart, uh, really just talking about the necessities that we need. And sometimes we need to have no fluff and we just need to look at things for what it is and say, I'm getting results or I'm not getting results based on how disciplined I'm being or not, right? That's just kind of the truth. So let's pray and then we will dive in. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these women that are here, these amazing women that you are working in their lives and changing and transforming their life as they grow closer to you. And we thank you that we get to see that and be a part of that and be a witness to that. Uh, through this community that we have. So we just praise you and thank you, God, that you are so amazing and so loving and uh, that you're bringing us together to support one another. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you speak to our hearts this morning with what you want us to hear and know and how you may be wanting us to act or change or think about things differently when it comes to discipline. So we just, we open ourselves up to your leading and your guidance. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, ladies. Well, as we continue to get started, I would love, right before we jump in, I would love for you to share, tag, invite, and definitely engage. When you engage, of course, we have great conversations, but hit that share button right now, share it out, or tag a friend if anyone in particular is coming to mind that you wanna share this with, that you want to have them come be a part of this and join us either live or on the replay. So definitely help us out by doing that. I love to see that. And so let's get started. This morning it says, 1 Timothy 4, 7 is our verse. 1 Timothy 4, 7, it says, Discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness. And that's coming from the New American Standard Version. Excuse me. Discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness. All right? It takes discipline to attain a higher level of physical fitness. We know this. God does not reward apathy, laziness, or idleness, 
nor does he reward undisciplined behavior. To the contrary, the Lord expects us to lead disciplined lives despite worldly temptations to do otherwise. Where would you ladies say you're at? Let's be super honest. Where would you say you're at on a scale of one to 10, one being absolutely no discipline whatsoever, 10 being I am so disciplined, I'm like a machine. Where would you say you're at on that scale of one to 10 for your discipline? And let's talk, because there's discipline in a lot of areas, but let's talk specifically in your health, okay? So for your health journey, knowing what you need, know, doing what you need to do, um, understanding all the things that come along with that, how disciplined are you? And so I would love to hear, if I had to give myself a rating right now from one to 10, honestly, I have not been very disciplined lately, okay? I just need to be super honest about that. And I would probably give myself like a six. <laughs> I wish that it was higher and I wish I could say like eight or nine or 10, but it's just not the case at this moment. And so I'm probably, yeah, Jordan says six to seven. I would say, yeah, six, maybe five, five to six. <laughs> Not as great as I would want it to be, but I would just love to hear where we are all at. And ultimately, the other question then is, where would you like to be? Where would you like to be? Belinda says, honestly, about a four. Thank you for being honest about that. So where would you like to be? So comment where you are now, and then let's think about where we would like to be. And, and honestly, be honest about that too. Like Maybe you don't want to be disciplined at a nine or a 10. Maybe you just don't. Maybe you don't like that, or maybe you think that, you know, if you're that disciplined, uh, all of a sudden you don't have fun, you know? So there may be some mental things going on also around how you view other people or the, or the perception of being disciplined. So where would you like to be? I would say, honestly, I would like to be like an eight or a nine. Discipline wise, I would like to be an eight or a nine. Uh, but right now I'm like at a five to a six right now. I know Jordan, you're right with traveling, uh, with my traveling, I was it was extremely hard to be disciplined. It is so, I will say, it is very difficult for me as well when traveling to be disciplined. Some people, they can still be completely disciplined while they travel. Personally, traveling really gets me, which makes me a little bit concerned for my upcoming traveling that we're about to do uh, to Texas and Louisiana and down to New Orleans, hopefully, and uh, traveling for about 10 days. And so a little concerned about that. Michelle, hey, good morning. Michelle says, about a six, I wanna be an eight. Barbie says, maybe a five. Mm-hmm. Hey, Sue. And then Belinda says, would love to be a nine, but realistically, I'd be happy with an eight. Thank you for sharing. Michelle says, being prepared helps me to be disciplined. Yes, you're totally right. There are things that we can do, and then ultimately habits that we can implement and create that then assist us in this place of discipline. So I love that you mentioned that, Michelle. Jordan says, I'd like to be a solid eight. That way, oh, hang on, lost my video real quick. What is the deal? Super weird, oh, there's my video now. Oh my gosh, why is this being so funky? Okay, sorry, let me see what, Jordan says, like to be a solid eight, that way I am true to my goals, but still allowing myself freedom to have a little, yes. And then Barbie says, I'd be happy with an eight. I feel like that allows for flexibility when days get super busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. I think a lot of us are in that same category then of, of liking to be around an eight. Sounds good. So there's things we need to do though, right? To get from where we currently are to where we want to be. There's things that we have to do and being disciplined is going to help us to get to a higher disciplined level, right? The only way it's gonna happen is by beginning to actually do it, putting the actions in motion. So it says, the media glorifies leisure. The ultimate goal, so the message goes, is to win the lottery and then retire to some sunny paradise, sitting idly by, watching the waves splash onto the sand. Such leisure activities are fine for a few days, but not for a lifetime. Life's greatest, accompli uh, sorry, life's greatest accomplishments are seldom the result of luck. More often than not, our greatest accomplishments require plenty of preparation and lots of work, which is perfectly fine with God. After all, he knows that we can do the work and he knows the rewards that we'll earn when we finish the job. 
Besides, God knows that he will always help us complete the tasks he has set before us. As a matter of fact, God usually does at least half of the work, the second half. <laughs> Interesting perspective. God does at least half of the work, the second half. Making us need to do the first half first. What do you ladies think about that? I feel that sometimes we do too much and we don't allow God to actually do what he wants to do. So we do need to also be careful with that, that we're not doing so much that uh, we push God out of the picture. But I do agree that when we begin acting on the things that he has set before us, on the way that the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding, when we begin acting in those things, then God does even more to move us in that direction. So let me pull this up real quick. Hey, Abigail, good morning. All right, I'm trying to just make sure I'm still getting your guys' comments at the moment, okay? So, all right. I just don't know why this is being so funky for me this morning. But somebody go ahead and comment right now so that I can know if your newest comments are coming through. I'm getting a little concerned. So funky. So that's all right. Let's head into more of our verses from this morning while we make sure that the comments are still coming through and I can see everything appropriately. Okay, more from God's word. It says Colossians 3.23. says, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. I love that. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than men. I remember one time, super quick story before we continue on. I remember I was in New Mexico and it was one of my cousin's weddings, an older cousin's wedding. And one of the ladies from the church, I think, had was a seamstress or had either made the bridesmaid dresses or was helping tailor the bridesmaid dresses or whatever it was. And it was like literally, like literally the day before the wedding and something happened and someone's dress needed to be tailored or maybe all of them needed something. So it was like this big job that came out of nowhere for this older woman in the church to do on a, on a crazy tight budget. So it was a lot to ask. And I remember her, this just stuck out to me. It was so different from a perspective I had never heard before. And you know, they were apologizing for the work and they were just so, you know, so thankful and grateful that she was able to do it because they knew they were putting a lot on her. And she said, this is not work at all. I'm not mending your dresses for you. I'm mending your dresses for the Lord. And I just, to me, that was just like, what? I had never heard that perspective before that she was working. She was literally the embodiment of that verse. She was working as unto the Lord. So she didn't care what pile of work they put on her and that it was a short deadline and that it was a lot to do and that it was out of the blue. She didn't care about any of it. She was happy to do it because she was working as unto the Lord. And I just thought, I have never seen. Okay, thank you ladies for commenting. All right, I'm only seeing comments on my computer, but thank you for doing that. Um, all right, Abigail. Oh, here we go. Okay, thank you, Jordan. Jordan says, work like it depends on you, but pray like it depends on God. I think that's from the circle maker, right? Is that quote from the circle maker? So yeah, thank you ladies for commenting. I realize I can see him on my computer, not the phone. So that's good. So I just thought, wow, and then to, to hear this verse after that, it's always stuck with me that that woman, that was her perspective, that was her embodiment fully of this verse, Colossians 3.23. So beautiful. Galatians 5.22-23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Ecclesiastes 7, 8 says, Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. I remember we talked about this verse in one of our previous uh, devotions a day or two ago. Ephesians 6, 10 says, A final word, be strong with the Lord's mighty power. When we feel like we are struggling with discipline, and we are struggling to do it all on our own. We have the Lord's power. We can ask for more strength, but that takes humility to do it, right? But 
the Lord is there to give us more strength to do it. And so I love this. A final word after talking about the, in Ephesians 6, right? Talking about the armor of God. Be strong with the Lord's mighty power. And then Proverbs 16, 32 says, It is better to be patient than powerful. It is better to have self-control than to conquer a city. Jordan says, yes, you mentioned that quote once before and it stuck with me. Yeah, absolutely. So good. So good. So our final one here, it is better to be patient than powerful. It is better to have self-control than conquer a city. How can that apply to us then when it comes to needing to implement discipline? That it is better to be patient, that it's going to take some time, that we, we want to move forward, but at the same time, we have to make sure that we're not beating ourselves up in the process right? So it needs to take some time. I'm looking for uh, Paula this morning. Jordan, I'm looking for Paula this morning. I hope she's doing well. Paula, if you watch this replay, we love you and are missing you. You have been a wonderful uh, contributor to our conversations over the past few weeks. About discipline. So let's go into some more quotes then about discipline. George McDonald says, think of something you ought to do and go do it. Heed not your feelings do your work. How oftentimes do you feel that your feelings get in the way and actually prevent you from doing what you know you would like to do or want to do? Feelings, yes, and our feelings, man, so oftentimes they can lead us astray because they're temporary, but yet they feel very strong. And so, but learning to overcome the feelings, to see them for what they are, to recognize them, but then to not allow the feelings to be the excuse to still move forward, that would be implementing another piece of discipline. Oh, okay, says uh, Paula has traveled to her grandmother's today. Okay, got it, sounds good. Well, we are missing her. Ben Franklin says, diligence is the mother of good luck and God gives all things to industry. That's an interesting quote. Harry Emerson Fosdick says, no horse gets anywhere until he is harnessed. No stream or gas drives anything until it is confined. No life ever grows great until it is focused, dedicated, and disciplined. I love that. So talking about things need to be harnessed in order to move forward. So in order to begin implementing discipline, we need to be focused, dedicated, and disciplined, it will help us move forward, like harnessing all of those things together and then moving you forward. I like that idea. John Piper says, so let us work hard, but never forget that it is not us, but the grace of God, which is with us. Absolutely. Keeping our pride in check. And then Elizabeth George says, personal discipline is a most powerful character quality and one worthy of dedicating your life to nurturing. Nurturing your personal discipline. And I agree that it is a lifelong thing to do, right? It is a lifelong character to build within yourself is this habit and this character of discipline. A lot of beautiful fruits come from discipline though. So we want to bear those fruit, right? We wanna bear the fruit of the results. And so, how do we get there? To be disciplined, to put our body under discipline. I think there's another uh, passage in scripture somewhere, I don't know exactly which one, what, but Paul is basically saying, Paul says like, I discipline my body, I make my body do what I need it to do. And so there's something to be said about that because our feelings would like to go another way sometimes, but we ultimately, have the control of what we actually do or not. Jordan says, I think non-scale victories are good for the patience over conquering a city. Yes, non-scale victories, I love that. We can expect to see results. We can't expect to see results in a day. Yeah, uh, thank you for bringing that up too. I love that we, we celebrate scale victories and non-scale victories though. And if you're not celebrating non-scale victories, then you are missing a lot and you will go down the path of defeat a lot quicker. So like in the group, in the Facebook group, 
the Healthy Christian Women group on Tuesdays when it's Toot Your Own Horn Tuesday and I put up the post and I say, what have you done for your health in the past week that you're proud of? That's also another opportunity to share your victories, to share your victories, to share your scale or non-scale victories. And what did you do to help you get there? <clears throat> Those things are so important because non-scale victories help you begin to see, yes, I am making progress. I, I did that better than I did before. You know, if I was in the same situation X amount of time ago, I wouldn't have reacted that way. I can see that I'm beginning to change. Non-scale victories. I can see that my clothes are beginning to fit differently even if the scale isn't moving. You know, I can see that I'm beginning to enjoy healthier foods more. I'm beginning to crave healthier foods more than I'm, you know, craving these other things now. So these are all non-scale victories that are piling up and there's typically so many more of them than there is scale victories. So we want to look at that. Michelle says, I love when I can be disciplined. It really sets the tone for all parts of my life. Yeah, it feels good, right? It feels good. It feels accomplished. Uh, that feeling of accomplishment, like, yes, I did it. I checked all these things off my list. I had a big to-do list and I began to work them through. And so then that discipline can absolutely be spreading into all areas of your life. That's super awesome. Thank you for sharing. So our food, fitness, and focus tips for today, food tips says, don't stock up on junk food. To avoid temptation, don't fill your pantry with unhealthy snacks, foods, and desserts. Stock up on healthy foods instead. That's kind of one of the basic bottom line principles when you're getting ready to make healthy changes is what is in your house? What is in your house? Don't bring the stuff home and if it's there, get rid of it. Don't bring it home and then it's just not there. Like it is important to purge your cupboards, to purge your freezer because when you go into that craving mode and that's all you wanna do is find the thing, you're gonna look through everything to try to find it, right? But if it's just not there, but there's some fruit there, it's like, well, fine. I couldn't find the ice cream. I couldn't find, you know, the chocolate candies. I couldn't find X, Y, and Z. I guess I'll just have some fruit. And then you'll have it and they'll be like, oh my gosh, that was so tasty, that was so good. Okay, I feel better. But if you don't even have those around and all you have is the other unhealthy options, then what are you gonna choose? The, it's, you're naturally gonna choose the more unhealthy option because those are typically laden with things that make our body want them and crave them. Salt, salt, sugar, and fat. So when those things are unhealthy fat, our body just has a propensity for those things. And if they're there, then that's most likely gonna be your default. So we want to work on stacking up our cupboards, getting rid of the stuff that's just gonna be a temptation and then not buying it again and not bringing it home. And I know that's much more difficult to do when you have kiddos and when you have different people that have different uh, food preferences and needs. It can be hard to begin to change the culture of food in your household, in your family, but it can be done. So at least, for you, beginning to have those options for you until your family begins to get on board. But it does happen, ladies, and it's so beautiful when I can see that happen, when people begin to make a change for themselves and pretty soon their entire family, entire family's diet, entire family's habits have all changed for the better. And it is so incredible to watch. Fitness Tip says, you can see them, but can they see you? What does that mean? Exercising outside after dark? Make sure to wear bright reflective clothes so that you can be seen by the cars around you. Yes, yes, yes. One of the, and now that it's daylight savings time, it gets darker even lighter, right? Uh, darker even earlier. <laughs> that didn't make sense, darker even lighter. Darker even earlier. And I hate that, it's such a pet peeve when people are jogging out late at night or riding bikes and they don't have something reflective uh, they don't have a flashlight or a light on their bike or uh, so like as silly as it may look in the daylight at nighttime, it really is important if you're out at night that you have those reflectors on your shoes and you have some sort of like a light and it's man. And when people crossing the street at night, completely wearing like all dark clothing, I'm just like, are you waiting to get hit by a car? Anyways, it's a pet peeve for me. So for sure. Abigail says, I'm learning to have healthier snacks in the house. Good for you, good for you. And then today's focus says, think about tangible steps you can take 
to lead a more disciplined life. So let's wrap up with this one. What are some tangible steps that you can take? Go ahead and put them in the comments right now to lead a more disciplined life. What does that look like for you? Some tangible steps that have come to mind to you throughout this devotion this morning. What can you begin to do? Even if it's one or two things that is like, all right, if I did that, I know that I would be moving in that direction. I want to hear from you. What could that be? Love it. Love it. We've got uh, Hey Jordan. Jordan says, Hey Rachel, hopefully that's, is that a friend? Is that one of your friends? Whoever we've got joining us? Welcome. Hello. So what are those tangible steps while we close it out today, ladies? What are those tangible steps that you can do to begin moving forward with more discipline? Tangible steps you can take to lead a more disciplined life. I already love that uh, Michelle said that when we do that, we begin to feel more disciplined in all areas of our life. And we've already talked about one thing, removing the unhealthy snacks from the house. That's already going to set you in the direction for one thing. But is there anything else? Oh, that's your best friend. I love it. I love it. Well, hello, Rachel. Welcome. What are some other ideas? Any other ideas, ladies, for what you could do to take that step forward? Tangible steps to lead a more disciplined life. Anything like setting some timers, setting some alarms, making a list of to-dos, and then feeling good when you get to cross them off your list. What could it be? I want to hear if you have any other ideas before we wrap it up this morning. And then we will be uh, closing it out for the weekend. And so we'll join again together on weekday morning. So again, on Monday morning for number 24, if you have our book, it's number 24, page 95 called the balancing act and note to you ladies right now. Uh, yeah, Belinda says writing down the plan, exactly writing it down, crossing it off, maybe finding some sort of a non food related, uh, way to give yourself a reward for when you've done that thing, when you've actually written it down, but now you've actually accomplished it. What could that be? So that might be something to also think about. What could you actually do that would, um, be some sort of like a celebratory thing that you could be earning up to maybe, or something that you could do. Accountability partners, Jordan says, yes. Jordan says, you've mentioned, yes, you did. You've made all these alarms and goals posted around the house. I love that. I know that you've made all those alarms in your phone. I think that's fabulous because then it's like, it's set, it's done. Now, as I see it, it's going to be those reminders until I can actually implement it without the reminders. So using that is a beautiful way, setting those alarms and goals on your phone, posting things around the house. I love it too, so that you see different things all around you. Sometimes even posting something like in the refrigerator or on the refrigerator or on the cabinet door that says, why are you opening me? You know, like being super intentional because if I go to the refrigerator mindlessly, I don't have a meal that I'm preparing. There's really no reason, but yet I'm opening the fridge just to look around and see if there's anything I can snack on. So sometimes kind of having that post-it like, why are you opening me? Are you really hungry? You put that little post-it note on your cupboard door. Are you really hungry? Why are you opening this or are you just bored? You know, so having some recommendations like that. Abigail says, who wants to partner with me? I love it. Abigail's looking for an accountability partner. So let's look and see. I'd love to see if anybody um, becomes your accountability partner. Love, love, love. I know that we've always got ladies inside the Healthy Christian Women group that are looking for accountability partners, Abigail. So we'll see if anybody joins you on this live stream. And then if not, for whatever reason, then post that as well inside our Facebook group and see who else would become an accountability partner with you because I know that they're out there. I love it. And if no one does, then I will, but that is wonderful. So just some different ideas on what you could do to really tangibly move yourself forward. So I was mentioning about Monday, Monday, we will resume again, 8 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday though. Okay. On Tuesday, next Tuesday, which I believe is the, uh, the 13th or the 11th or 13th. Anyways, whatever next Tuesday is, 
we are going to be having a super special time that day. So we won't have our devotion on Tuesday because instead at the same time, we're actually going to be doing a live podcast interview with a psychologist friend of mine named Dr. Barbara. And she is going to be talking about helping women move through past pain, move through past trauma and implement what she calls the hearts returning home method. And it is just going to be such a very, very powerful and incredible time. So you're going to want to make sure to join us next Tuesday. We won't have our live devotion here, but I'll, I'll be posting it here because we'll be doing our joint live stream together at the same time here instead. So next Tuesday, join us for that and bring any sort of questions that you may have. Uh, we are really looking for a really awesome and dynamic conversation together with the people that are on with us live. And that will become a new podcast episode as well. So join us for next Tuesday. Thank you. The 13th. And then, uh, but then Monday will be our regular ones. Okay. Well, all right, ladies, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Wonderful discussions this morning and great ideas as for moving forward with discipline, moving forward to create more discipline in your lives. You will reap the results of it and it will be worth it. So, all right, everybody love you. Have a wonderful rest of your week and your weekend, and I'll see you again live next Monday morning. All right. Bye ladies.